what should you be aware of before moving out and beginning to live independently for the first time. Take pics of the apartment before moving your stuff in, the carpet, the floors, baseboards, everything. Just to cover your ass. Some landlords are total pos and will try to keep security for a stain in the rug that was there when you moved in. That's a brilliant idea. Thank you as well. Hopefully my future landlord won't be a rat. In my travels, I have only had one or two that were. But they get real stingy with that security deposit I have definition had to chase down every single security deposit ever over dumb crap. Good luck and enjoy. Buy a plunger before you need it. An add-on would be, if the toilet does get plugged, do not flush again. Turn off the water supply to the toilet and wait until the water level goes down enough to use the plunger. Once the toilet is unclogged with the plunger you can flush again. And if it's that bad that a plunger won't work, dump some cheap shampoo down the toilet and wait then dump a pail of hot from the tap water down. That usually does the trick. All the hidden expenses. Sure you have rent, utilities, trash, etc. But do you have a washer and dryer in the place you're moving? Do you have furniture? A bed even? If you do how, will you move it? Do you have cooking items? How about food? Is there a grocery store close by? How about parking? And or the nearest subway slash bus stop? Cleaning and upkeep too. Now it's on you to do everything, if you're by yourself. You do the dishes, you vacuum, you dust, you cook, you decorate, etc. Go through everything you do at home now, and think to yourself, when I move I can either have this, by buying it slash renting a place, that has this, or I will have to go without. Crap is awesome moving out for the first time, but it also sucks those first couple of mess ups, and you're eating bread and water for dinner. Also if you have friends, make them respect your place. People let their friends trash their place slash it's a chill spot. Screw that, it's your home. If they don't help you keep it clean slash respect your privacy it can lead to some animosity. Yeah. There's most definitely a lot under the surface. I'm gon have to look into further dividing my budget again. Great tips though. Thank you. That bread and water part made me laugh tbh. Independent life. Seems fun. Good on you for making a budget. Hi ah, yeah, me and the roommates got too high and spent all our grocery money on snacks. One roommate moved out because of it, understandably. Forgot how dumb I was as a 17 year old. Told my teacher who lived next to us and she made sure to go grocery shopping with me after that. First floor of an apartment building gets robbed the most and deals with bugs slash mice slash rats slash etc that upper floors don't always have to. It's easier to move your stuff though. Keep your windows and doors locked and don't keep expensive things like computers and game consoles within view of the windows. My last apartment was third floor. It sucked moving and slash out but it was relatively quiet for how thin the walls were and in the winter the heat would hardly ever run. The act got expensive in the summer though. Never a single ant or spider which was nice. Plus no kids stomping the yard above your head. Top floor is great in the long run. I'm currently on the bottom floor, moved recently, and we get millipeds. Tons of them. The neighborhood is posh though, so I'm not concerned about the whole B&D thing. It's cheaper to eat at home than going out. Especially if you learn how to effectively use rice, beans, and noodles, and buy them in bulk. They can be flavored in tons of ways. A serving of rice from a 20 pound bag is about 6 cents. Makes sure to freeze any bulk meat you get separately in portions, though. When I first moved out I bought a massive pile of meat from a local butcher selling it absurdly cheap. Ended up spending like a month hacking the resulting meat ice ball with a half broken knife and a hammer until I got enough meat off it to cook, because defrosting the entire ball would have probably given me food poisoning. The amount of things you have to buy adds up fast. Stuff your parents wouldn't have made you pay for at home toilet paper, paper towels, cleaning supplies, toothpaste, hand soap, dish soap. I feel like it seems like you mostly just need to budget for food but that's not the case at all. That stuff adds up and for me, it feels like, as soon as I budget for one thing, something else runs out, that I have to buy too. If you have the money up front, buying in bulk is much more convenient, and will save you a lot of time and money overall. But of course, not everyone can afford that. This kinda worries me. 
the ability to tailor the expanses accurately, so I can last from month to month. Worst case. Scenario I cut non-essentials off the list. Thank you for insight though. I suggest getting a large dry erase calendar, hang it up, and write every payday, bill, and due date on it. Also, get a file box for keeping important documents in. Your birth certificate, social security card, title to your car, anything important like that. The initial feelings loneliness was weird at first knowing people weren't just in the next room or gonna come walking through the door later. Took some getting used to, but learned to love it. Can you get used to it? Personally I don't handle loneliness very well. Was thinking to get a cat or little dog to help me combat that bish. I would seriously not recommend getting an animal. Not for a while at least. You need to make sure you can properly look free yourself first. And if you are worried about being able to pay bills, vet bills and constant food won't help with that. Sorry don't mean to be a bummer it is just such a big responsibility. I only moved out a year ago, but I know I couldn't actually have the responsibility of a dog that I needed to walk. To be honest it's been nice not having that sort of responsibility. I can eat when I get hungry and sleep till whenever I like. If you are planning to have roommates, you need to discuss and come to an agreement on things like acceptable cleanliness, boundaries with things like food or other things you have purchased, chores, and general expectations for your living space. Living with friends can be fun, but if you are not on the same page before living it can be awful and lead to destroyed friendships. I was one of the first to move out at 18. And so many friends and roommates will take advantage of you if you do not figure this out up front. Things like, why should I take out the trash or clean? I don't mind a pile of trash bags or a sink full of crusty disgusting dishes. This is just an example of a real argument I had with a roommate. Food is another big one. I tend to like sharing food with people, but some people will not contribute the same quality or will not contribute at all. Also, if you live with roommates make sure you have your own laundry basket. With my first roommate I had a laundry basket and she didn't, so she would use mine, which meant I got irritated text messages when I'd take my stuff off the indoor line then have to go to work when she'd decide that she need to do her washing, only to discover my basket wasn't there for her to move her clothes. I feel like you need to rephrase this advice as make sure your roommate isn't a jerk. If you live with roommates, beware when they offer food. I had roommates once that always made more food than they could eat and would throw away any leftovers because they didn't like to eat leftovers. They told me I could take the leftovers for lunch at work. All was well until they stopped paying their share of the utilities. It wouldn't be so bad if not for the fact they would leave the lights on all night long while they slept which ran up my electricity bill. When I confronted them, they told me they shouldn't have to pay utilities because I ate their food. Food, which they said they'd throw out anyway. If they had mentioned those strings, I'd never have accepted their generosity. Also, never get into an argument with a roommate when they've clearly gone through half a bottle of whiskey. It won't end well. Damn, that's pretty crappy. Tough experience? The first set of roommates? Kinda. They also had a cat that liked to piss on my bed. I had a cat of my own, so I couldn't just close her in my room because it wasn't fair to her. She'd been there way longer, but they wouldn't do anything to keep the cat out of my room. For the wasted roommate, he accused me of calling the hoer on him for parking his giant workbox truck in front of the house. He also accused me of trying to steal his girlfriend, whom I only saw as a friend, especially because she helped me when I had to go to the air after an electric scooter accident. Make it your space. When people visit they're going to see the real you. Do you want them to see laundry piled up and dishes everywhere? Or are they going to see someone has got their crap together, cool stuff on the walls, or whatever it is you like? Remember, crap won't be handed to you. Make it your space to learn and grow as a human. It's only just started. Two points on this that really helped me, both of which I think I got from Reddit. One. If something takes less than 2 minutes, do it now, rather than putting it off. It makes a huge difference if you stick to it. Taking dishes to the kitchen, hanging clothes up, throwing something out, rather than leaving it there, these things all pile up if you let them. 2. Not sure how best to explain this one, 
but if you've got a minute in between tasks, use it to accomplish something else. For example, whenever I'm cooking I use any downtime to do dishes I've already produced. Yeah your number 2 point, if you're going to be doing some cleanup and other chores for an hour or two, throw in the laundry first. It will feel good once everything is completely done all at once. Whatever you were doing before for savings, you're going to have a tougher time doing it. But don't let your savings take a backseat. Continue to look toward the future. Also in the interest of saving, there's nothing wrong with moving back home, if you've got good folks. But my gf, and I moved back to my parents, to continue to save for a house, and even though a lot of people talk about it not one person explains adequately enough how hard it is to live back in your parents place, after being on your own lol. I have an amazing, inclusive family and it's still difficult a lot of days. Saving up for future is a great idea. Thank you. Glad you have. Folks that helped you out, D. As someone who was forced to take care of myself at the age of 17 I've learned few things in very short time. Bills are the first things that have to be paid, no exceptions. In about a month you will have an idea how much you spend on food. This have to be your iron money, untouchable for any other purpose. As someone who lives on their own you will probably have some parties at your place. When you do make people respect your home, use your credit card to buy groceries for a week and pay it off after a week using your iron money. I don't know what country you are from, so you will have to look it up how it works with your bank. Have your credit card balance paid off before the end of the month. This way you will never pay interests, and in time you will build up good credit score. If you really want something you can't pay for with cash, don't buy it just yet. Save money and buy when you have cash. Keep your place clean, it's your safe harbor, and it will make you feel good. Opposite sex will notice too. Personalize and make it your place. As for loneliness, remember when you are alone you can truly look at yourself. Get to know yourself, who are you really? Where are you going what are your goals? Is it any true to what people told you you are since you were born? Set small dreams and set the dates. This will immediately become a plan. Try to make it happen. Have fun, it's a new adventure. Good luck. Beautifully said, thank you. Pick your room at wisely, because if they are doing something illegal the police and the DA's office will assume you are in on it. My friend's room had was busted selling illegal guns. Local SWAT and ATF came in the middle of night and arrested my friend and his roommate. He and his roommate's mug shoot made the local news. The next day his bail was set too high for him to post bail 3 weeks later the DA drops the charges and he was freed from county jail. When he got out he lost his job, the landlord was already filing eviction paperwork and he was late on student loan and car payments. On top of that when. If you google his name the first thing that comes up is his arrest on gun charges with the 3am mugshot that makes it look like he was on drugs since was in a state of shock at the time of the picture. He became unemployable in his profession, moved back with his parents in the midwest and now works full time at Walmart. Quite the drop for someone that had dual bachelor's degrees from MIT and Harvard and a PhD from Caltech. Oh my god, poor guy. All of this cause of one crappy roommate things you own own you. The cost of an item not only price, storage, and upkeep cycles. Items you won't use very often rent, borrow, do not buy. Examples, do not buy a rug scrubber. The rental will always be up to date, more powerful, and will not cost you to store. Do not buy a bund pan borrow one. Ask yourself, is this a lifetime purchase? If so make the purchase lasting quality. Lasting quality can be found second hand. Example, buy a cast iron pan, and not the non-stick pan. Non-stick pans have a lifetime. Cast iron is forever. This is your first place, not your last. Nothing worse than moving a bunch of crap you don't use, or even like dozens of times. The less stuff you have in an area the easier and faster it will be to clean. Of the things you have make certain they actually have a place. Heh, <laughs> when you buy something think about where you will put it. If you can afford to do so get a portable dishwasher as you do not have a dishwasher. This is especially true if you have roommates. I will save arguments. Get a rice cooker. The $20 one with the steamer basket. Download a budgeting app and use something like Mint. Weigh yourself daily. If you are out of your threshold skip a few meals. Don't buy a futon. A mattress on the floor 
can be upgraded with a good wool bed frame later. Even if you are not male have tampons or pads on hand. You are likely young, will have guests over. Life happens and people appreciate these things. You seem like you already have an idea of this, but here goes. If budget is an issue, a very spartan existence, an austere diet, sleeping on a bunk, owning and just two or three pairs of pants and a couple shirts for normal dress, this is quite easy to adjust to if you're not there already. Don't spend money on things that catch your eye. If you really want something, that's fine, but it can wait a month. If you really still want it in a month, then you can get it. You can go another month without it, seeing as you've gone your whole life without it. Don't buy jewelry of any kind, if you can help it, either it's worthless to begin with, or if it is real, it depreciates in value by more than 10% the instant you buy it. Don't buy fashionable shoes, buy durable shoes. The dent or scratch in your car does not change the way it drives. Conversely to all of this, eat quality, healthy food. You'll feel better, and your health will be better. Look at it as insurance, by keeping yourself healthy or now, you'll have less problems in the future, and higher quality of life, less medical bills, the whole shebang. It's just better in every way. If you've been eating an unhealthy diet for most of your life as most Americans have been, you're accustomed to the way that you feel now, and you don't know how good you can feel when you purge all that stuff out of your system. Thank you so much for your thoughts. Is it possible to maintain healthy eating habits on relatively tiny budget? Feel like I'm about to get a taste of that Spartan existence. <laughs>